Do you know, I just wish this wind <laughs> would go. It's literally day three of it being windy here. We had a storm, Storm Eunice, uh, which hit the UK and it was very windy indeed. Gusts of up to, I don't know, like 100 miles per hour in some places. Anyway, we were fine in Norfolk. We didn't have too much devastation. The only thing which took the hit was my garden gate and we had a branch down. Actually, no, we had three trees down here at the yard, but luckily none were near the horses, so it was all fine. Um, that's why I'm opening the vlog today. Hey, welcome. I said hi. Welcome to Philly's Fashion Vlog. Um, opening the vlog in the car today. So I apologise in advance if there's a little bit of wind noise um, in today's vlog, but I can't really help it. I've got my dead cat. Is that what this is called? Hang on. I've got this. But I don't know how much this is going to help with the actual huge gusts. So I pitched up at the yard Sunday morning and uh, today I am going to be riding Lara and I'm going to be solving a problem, problem solving with you. Now, some of you may know that I have just bought a new horse. He's a little racehorse and currently he's living at my trainer Justine's yard. I've also made a playlist dedicated to Little Ember, that's his name. Uh, so if you want to go and catch up, if you're new to my channel and you're thinking, what are you talking about? You can go catch up on those vlogs and get up to speed. So basically he's living at my trainer's yard and I've still got my horses at the yard where I keep them. Eventually, obviously I want to move Ember to this yard, but I thought through winter, Justine, my trainer, has got a lovely arena at hers. It's perfect, he's all settled there. And I didn't want to upset the apple cart whilst we're in the, first stages of his retraining really just for his own benefit and also it benefits me because she's got the arena she's got the facilities I have here a grass arena e.g. a field basically it's easier and safer if he just stays there for the time being and in the summer I'm planning to move him over but today as I said we're going to do some problem solving I need your help and opinion of what to do in terms of setup because I have well we have a new livery and I'm gonna show you the livery today and I think you're gonna love him because he's so cute. For now, anyway, I need to go and get the horses in because they're probably waiting for the breakfast. So my horses are living out currently 24 seven. However, uh, in the day, if it's, ow! Whoa, oh, I just really hurt my foot. In the day, um, they can come in if it's windy or rainy. And so this is Harry's stable here. He's on a new bedding. He's on like this weird wood pellet stuff. Um, not wood pellets, it's like wood chip. Um, and Lara, Lara's stable. And I, ah, whoa, <laughs> sorry, it's a pigeon. Nothing's going well today, is it? Um, this is Lara's stable and look, I um, I showed this on my Instagram the other day, yesterday actually. These is, this is called a nose bags hay feeder and it's like an alternative to one of those big bulky plastic hay feeders. And basically it's changed my life filling hay nets no more because of these. Well, I, I still have to fill Harry's. Um, and Bonnie's got one too. Bonnie needs some more bedding today. Anyway, they're probably waiting for me. Waiting for their breakfast. Yes, can you see? There, Lana. Hi, sorry, I'm a bit late. I am a little bit late today, but it's Sunday. And that's the good thing about them being out is I don't really, obviously I like to keep to a routine as much as possible, but I don't have to worry that they're stuck in a pooey stable because living out um, is, is the dream, really. So, I'm just gonna make up the feeds now. Right, so in theory, I've got bringing them in to a fine art because they know that when they come in, they're gonna get their breakfast. So, I don't, I only put a head collar on Lara and make sure Lara comes first. And then, in theory, the others follow. I bet you any money today, guys, that they're not going to do that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, speaking of hope, can't we? Hello. We are waiting. Hello, Harry. Oh, Laura says, can you hurry up, please? It's very muddy. Right, so I mentioned I've got a new livery and obviously that's the reason why 
Obviously, this is a block of four stables here. So you've got Bonnie's, Lara's, this is Harry's. Hi, Harry. Um, and then this one is the new livery stable. However, they're very much using it as an extra tack room. Partly because I've got so much stuff in actual tack room uh, that it doesn't, there's no room. <laughs> This is all my stuff, there's so much, so much stuff. I'm actually in the process of sorting it out. I need an extra stable. Um, and I don't want Bonnie to be stableless because that would be the obvious option. She's a native pony. That's not fair because she loves coming in and I wouldn't want to separate her from her friends. So this is where you guys come in to help me with the options. Um, now I've been thinking about this long and hard and currently I am using this barn thing here let me get back so you can see this here it's got two sides uh, to store my haylage in we've actually had a pony live in that side before but i was thinking well it can't be that hard to convert this area into a little stable for bonnie now all i need i think is some kickboards on the gate there so she doesn't get her leg through and again same on these side partitions and then pop some rubber matting down and i think that's quite easy there are a couple of holes in the roof though i guess that's better than being outside the only thing is she can't see the others which is a little bit sad but she could hear them she doesn't really care to be honest she's so chilled she as long as she's kind of dry and happy that's kind of anyway so that's option a so it would require a little bit of diy from me or realistically someone else who can do it a bit better than me i'm going to show you option b but via option b we're going to go and meet the new livery because he also lives out in the field and he's very cute guesses below comment below what you think he could be what breed how big hmm he is super cute though here we are approaching the new livery his name is rusty and i'm gonna do a little pan round He's a big boy. <laughs> Are you a big boy? Oh my gosh, he's literally the cutest thing. And he's a giant. Look how big he is. Are you big? He's camera shy. He says no, we've got treats, no treats. So this is Rusty. He's probably, well, I'm five foot 11 and his wither is up there. So I'd say he's 17, three. Probably. He's a Clydesdale, like a Budweiser horse. And he is just absolutely amazing, aren't you? And his lovely owner, Jackie and Chris, Jackie rides him. She hacks him out. And uh, apparently he's a superstar. Actually, I have hacked out with him before. Haven't I? I've hacked out with you. Uh, and Jackie says one day, maybe if I'm lucky, she'll let me have a little sit on him. Now, Rusty, I don't think you're supposed to be in this bit, my darling. So let's go. Let's go. Uh, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Yay, good boy. Oh, he's so cute. And the good thing is, he's so chilled and so calm that he's not going to go careering around churning up all the paddocks. Um, and he just kind of boom, 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 boom loops about and you don't mind when the others come in and he's by himself he doesn't care you don't care do you he's so chilled he says i'm very relaxed and he didn't bat an eyelid in the storm did you no oh look he's so cute anyway so this is the new livery and i love him and he's so cute big love to rusty everyone comment below if you want to see me ride him so a few of you have always been kind of intrigued as to what the yard setup is now um this uh the stables and the fields belong to my boyfriend's family and i've ever since i moved here five years ago i've kept my horses here and uh, it was originally just me and then i thought well it'd be nice to have some more liveries here so we've obviously got rusty in now um and then we've got louise with her two horses in the field by the arena grass arena so in terms of capacity technically we're full but not really technically in terms of 
grazing. We've got plenty of grass and we've got plenty of other options for grass. And that is where I currently am. I'm having a walk through, across the river, through the garden. Sorry, I've got some new layers on. It's not actually that cold today. Um, and we're coming into a field which hasn't been used for God knows how long, uh, two, two summers ago. And it is this huge, it's massive. It's a massive field. And I'm thinking in the summer, I may consider bugging them out here for a bit to give my field across there a rest. Needs a few maintenance works. The field shelter is complete no go. Um, the horses definitely cannot use it, but it's far too wet in the winter to use this. And uh, but in the summer, it's going to be a good. I think it's a good option to give my um, to give my fields a bit of a rest. And I don't know. I think they're on holiday. The other option, which I was saying about the stables, is right down the bottom through a few gates, through a few more fields, which are not really habitable because they're really overgrown. This one's actually not too bad. But it's um, an unused, it's an unused field, and in the unused field is option B. So after what feels like a lifetime of walking, I'm finally at my destination, and that is the very last field um, in this bit of land. And here we have my potential option B, which is this field shelter. Well, slash stables. I guess it's stables. there's two stables in here um, and I think this would be a good option the problem is finding a way of moving it from here all the way to the stables so that's where I'm thinking kind of option a might be easier in that respect I don't know and I was thinking actually as I was walking along up here why don't I move this to the summer field where the old field shelter was knock that down and put that there and then that can be their summer field shelter. All I'd need to do is get rid of the partitions in the middle so they can go in and out easily. And then maybe I can use the partitions for option A. Oh God, guys, sorry. Just literally talking through this with you now has, I think, solved my problem. So let me know what you think. Is that a good option? That thing. Ooh. No, 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 no. Abort, abort. <laughs> um, right, yeah, so there we go. I think I've worked out the options. The problem will be, yeah, the problem will be getting that guy down the bottom. Do you agree with me, firstly? Do you agree that that's what I should do? Or should I bring it to the stables and then Bonnie has a proper stable? I don't know. Oh, look, a peacock. That's way more fun to see. Are you going to zoom in? Zoom, zoom, zoom. Can you see? Points if you can see the peacock. Can you see it? Oh. There he is. Look who I caught having a nap. Oh, good girl, you stay there. Sorry, I didn't mean to wake you up. Right. Do you want to go for a windy ride? Do you want to go for a windy ride? Oh, she says, not really. I'm going to take Lara. She, Lara's absolutely fine in the wind. We're going to have a lovely hack. Then I'm going to pop home, have some lunch. And then I'm going to take you over to say hello to Ember. You haven't met Ember yet, no. He's a secret. You haven't met him. You don't know who I'm talking about, do you? No. That's so. Right, so we are ready for a hack. We're just gonna do a plod up to the pub today and then back. I say a plod, it's not going to be a plod, is it, Lara? Because you're very excited at the moment now, hacking. Um, I'm just bringing her back into work, really. And I think she's on week three. We're still very much walking and doing little bits of trot here and there. Um, and have hacked all through that, apart from once where I took her in the arena for a little school. And she's been as good as gold. So it's really nice. I've never had her in winter. I've never had her fluffy before. It's so weird not, ha not having a a clipped horse. You happy, Lara? Yeah? Lara, are you happy? <laughs> Better get on with it. And then Harry Barry 
You're going to stay here, aren't you, mate? Because I'm not riding him at the moment. Harry's having a little holiday. He's had a few issues with his skin, as I've mentioned, and uh, I just want them to be right as rain before I start doing anything. But, you know, there's no harm in him having a holiday. It just means we won't be eventing at the start of the season, uh, which is, you know, we've got all season. There's no rush, so, yeah. And you're just going to go and have fun, aren't you? Yeah? See when I'm back. I might actually see you when I'm at Ember Stable, so see you there. Per. <laughs> I've arrived at Justine's and we're going to see Ember. Hello. <laughs> Hello, my darling. Should we... Oh, I can't open this blooming door. Oh, hi. Hello. We're going to have a lesson. I think I chose the wrong time to school the thoroughbred. <laughs> My girl's not tight enough for spooking, Justine! <laughs> oh my gosh, it's absolutely horrendous out here! Say hi! Hi! <laughs> right, so Justine's going to help me. If you can hear me over the wind, Justine's going to help me. Have a little school today. Might have some... Okay, she's going to put the... I think it's a bit too windy to jump. Probably. So we'll do some pole work and stuff and see how we get on. Good boy. Yeah. So this is Storm Eunice, the aftermath. And what better way to school a young horse than a howling gale? No, no fair weathers, you're absolutely right. No fair weathers instructors either. <laughs> Although I'm not quite sure why she ever allows me to film because I very definitely am an amateur. Because Lucy had got his jumping bit on, but we're not doing jumping because it's too windy. We've just swapped the rain onto the middle bit. Okay, so when you're ready, so although we may not be taking the contact, when you go into the trot, yep. keep that hand, keep the contact to keep the rein taut so you can feel with a light hand and just press him into the trot to the, to the contact because he's just got to learn to take a better contact. Good boy. Lad. Good boy. Whilst just think about slow your rising. Good. And then do a serpentine three loops. Thinking about even contact. Doesn't necessarily matter what his head's doing. Think about even contact. A nice rhythm. That's better. Good. So rather than thinking too much about the outline, just try and think about an even hand, an even rhythm. That's better. Oh dear. Like a bee, I don't like the wind. And just think about through, through the transition, that's better. And then back into trot. Just a light leg, keep the contact. Good lad. Good lad. And just think, trot, don't look at them. Think of the trees. Think of the trees. Just stay rising, just stay rising. But just don't look at them. Look up in the air. Look up in the air. That's 
that's it. Good lad. Think of the trees. Think of the trees. Good boy. But this side and then back to the track. Just thinking about your shoulders turning with him. Good. And the contact. Good. And the rhythm. That's it. Good. Good boy. Good. Good. And then down over the other three trot poles. Imagine they're not there. Good boy. And down over these four. Again, just imagine they're not there. Dad. Good boy, good boy. Going as slow as you can over the poles. Really rise a bit higher. So you can go slowly. Think slowly, that's it. Think slowly, think slowly. There, yeah? Because he's so eager to not tread on them, he tends to speed up a bit. You've just got to say, just slow. Give him time to work it out. Good, that's better. Good lad. No, it's all right, it's all right. It doesn't matter, think. Good boy. Good lad. Good boy. Just circle this end now. On a smallish circle. And then just with your outside aid and your outside leg and your shoulders, just bring him in small round me and slow to a rhythm. Just bring him in round and tight to me, really turning your shoulders. Really exaggerate so he has to just step and just try and get him a little bit round because this is hard for him. Good. And get him to stretch down a little bit if he will. Good boy. And then just a tiny bit of inside leg to push him out on the circle. Good lad. Really trying to keep that contact. Good boy. Just by getting him to do that, can you feel he finds it hard? Yeah. A lot of that is because he's so powerful, yeah. he doesn't, he can't contain it terribly well. And so you, you've got to encourage him to really use it yeah. in a way that he never has, yeah? Ooh. I've got sweat dripping down my back. Nice. Almost don't want to do any canter today. No, I, I, yeah. I just, I just think, you yeah. know, it is. I'm going to press pause. I just think he needs, uh, you know, it. It's windy. Yeah. He's actually stayed really calm. Yeah. Good boy. Gosh, <laughs> what a star that little pony is. Because they were very, very, very bad conditions to ride in. It's even windy in this barn. Um, but now he is in here. He's going to stay in tonight. Aren't you? Um, and he's having his supper. And then I'm going to now knit back and put, put the other horses back out in the field. Um, which they'll be delighted about seeing as they've been in all day. Hope you enjoyed this weird catch up of my day. What's been going on at the yard. Um, if you enjoyed the vlog, make sure you give it a like, leave me a comment, and uh, hopefully I'll see you again midweek because there may be, if it's not cancelled, fingers crossed, a chance that I'm taking Ember for his first time cross-country schooling. Fingers crossed. It may or may not happen, depending on the weather. So I'm not holding my breath, but it'd be super fun if it does happen. So uh, make sure you stay tuned in. Anyway, as I said, need to crack on. And then I need to edit this vlog for it to go out tomorrow. So I will see you guys, hopefully, sometime in the week, if not next Monday. Bye.